Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. Superior taste. Superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. I come home like I said. Ma, you hear me? I come home hurt. Ma. You looking for somebody? What? It's Pete. I'm looking for Ma Belvin. It's her place, ain't it? I'm your brother, Joe. Don't you know me? Of course, I've drove some. You ain't seen me since you left home. Where's Ma? She is... She ain't here, Pete. Well, fetch her. I'm hurt bad. I... I can't do that. Fetch her. I rode hard for her. Healing. She... She's dead. Dead? Ma? A year ago. She went thin. She'd been ailing a long time. I always aimed to come home, I told her. Hey, come on. I'll help you down off that horse. Yeah. Whoa. Ain't gonna be no use if Ma ain't here. I'm bad hit. Maybe it ain't so bad. Here, in the back room. Now, lay down there on the bed. Mm. Oh. oh, it's bad. Now, take a look. I ain't as good as Ma, but I've been right handy with the stock. You got a hole in you for fair. It ain't no use. Ma could have helped me. Ma had healing hands. Ain't no use. It ain't all that bad. I'll get the doctor. No doctor. He'll fix you up. No, you ain't gonna bring no doctor. You talk light-headed, Pete. A, a doc knows more about healing than you Ma bring did. bring the doc, you'll bring the law. The law? Leave it be. Well, you... You want it, Pete? I said leave it be. I gotta know. All right. You gotta know. I'm wanted. The law wants me. What for? We robbed a bank. I got shot. I come home. I brung my share out in them saddlebags. I come home for Ma's healing. I brung the money. 
I'm glad she didn't know. You gotta keep your strength up. Oh. You worsen like this, I gotta do something, Pete. No use. Now, you just listen to me a little bit. I've been thinking. You ain't never killed nobody, have you? No, I ain't never killed. Then the law just wants you for the money you stole? That's a plenty. Yeah. But you could give it back. No. You could give it back and save the law a lot oh, of hunting and tracking. Fucking crazy. No, I ain't. Oh. No, I ain't. You've got to have help. Now, I'm going to ride into Dodge for the doctor. Oh, the law. Now, don't you worry none. I'll see the marshal. I'll tell him you want to square things up. The, the law is supposed to be fair, ain't it? Oh, all right, then. Now, you give back the money and it'll be all right. Pete? All right, you just stay there resting. I'll get the dock. And I'm going to hurry, Pete. I'm going to hurry. Chester's coffee would have ruined your taste for the stuff. Oh, Sam's coffee isn't that much better, Kitty. Oh, don't let him hear you say that. I've said it to him a couple of times. Huh? What'd <laughs> Sam say? <laughs> he said I could always drink whiskey. <laughs> well, he's right about that. Yeah. You know, he may be making the coffee bad on purpose. Oh, well, now, I don't know about... Uh, yeah, right here, son. Uh, I'd like to talk to you. Well, why don't you sit down, son? Well, thank you, ma'am, but I, I ain't just easy in a place like this. Uh, would you come outside, Marshal? All right, son. Uh, I'll see you later, Kitty. Sure, Mark. Uh, what's your name, boy? Uh, Joe. Joe Belvin. Belvin? Well, your place is east of town, isn't it? About 12 miles. Uh -huh. I haven't talked to you before, have I? No, Marshal, uh... I ain't spent much time in town. Ma didn't take to a man wasting himself in a town like Dodge. Oh. All right, Joe, we can talk here. What can I do for you? Well, Marshal, uh, it's about the law. Yeah. What about the law? I've been figuring on a problem. Well, go on. The law is writ supposed to be fair, ain't it? Well, that's the general idea, yeah. It ain't just for locking up and hanging, is it? Maybe you better tell me what you're driving at, Joe. Well, uh, it's like this, Marshal. Suppose a man done something wrong, and then he squares it up. Wouldn't be no use to arrest him now, would there? Uh, that would depend on what he'd done. Well, uh, like robbing a bank? Oh, now, that'd be pretty hard to square, Joe. But the way I figured, Marshal, a man, if he hadn't hurt nobody, could save the law a lot of trouble. How's that? Well, he could turn the money back, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah he could do that. That's what I said. That's the way I seen it. He'd be square. Yeah, but he'd still have to stand trial, Joe. What kind of law is that? The law that was broken. That ain't right, Marshal. The law's supposed to help folks, ain't it? It's not supposed to help folks rob a bank, Joe. But wouldn't it be easier for you if you got the money? Now, listen to me. I don't know what's on your mind, but I can tell you what's on mine. I'm not interested in things being easier. Getting hold of the money wouldn't make no difference? Wouldn't make any difference. 
It don't seem that the law help a man, and that's a fact. He could do better without it. Joe, you get ideas like that in your head, and you're bound for trouble. You ain't offered me nothing but trouble. I'll be moving on, Marshal, and thanks for nothing. I won't be forgetting neither. I hope you won't, Joe. Matt, do me a favor, will you please? Well, sure, Doc. What is it? Well, will you see that this letter gets to the post office in time to get on stage? I just got a call to go out of town, and I'd like to get started right now. Sure, I'm headed that way anyway. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, Here it is. Must be pretty important. Well, I'm sending for a new medical book. I'd like to get it as soon as I can. <laughs> Why, Doc, I thought you knew everything already. Uh, well, I may at that, but I'd like to give the new books a chance. So, so long, Matt. Where are you headed for in such a hurry? Out to the Belvin place. The Belvin place? Well, who's sick out there? I don't know yet. The board just said to hurry. So I'll see you later, man. Yeah, Doc. I'll see you later. It's a pretty long 12 miles, if you ask me. You know, folks hear you talk like that, Chester, they'll say you're getting old. Well, folks can just mind their own business. I don't mind writing out no words when I know what I'm doing, but this don't make much sense to me, Mr. Dillon. I'm frank to tell you that. I'm sorry you don't approve, Chester. I'm riding out here to see about somebody that's sick. We don't even know who it is. Well, that's Doc's job, ain't it? Well, I have a hunch it may be our job, too. Now we turn in here. Yes, sir. I didn't know nobody else lived out here but that boy since the old lady died. Must be somebody there now. We'll ride right up to the porch. Mm, right, sir. Well, Doc couldn't have stayed very long. His buggy ain't here. Yeah. Well, let's see who is here. Anybody home? Open up. Well, if he is a sick person in there, he must be real bad off not to hear that. Yeah. Now let's go in. Now you look in the kitchen, Chester. I'll see to that room. All right. into a man's house like... Oh, it's you, Marshal. Hello, Joe. You ain't got no call to come busting in here. I was looking for Doc Adams. He said he was coming out here. Well, it was a mistake. Oh? Well, he said somebody was sick. It was a mistake, I tell you. There ain't nobody here. Well, I can see that. You can go on, then. I can see something else, too, Joe. There's been quite a bit of blood spilled in that other room. That ain't no business of yours. Maybe not. But if it is my business, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble by telling me about it. I told you, Marshal, I don't need no help from the law. Well, I hope you're right, Joe. I just hope you're right. <laughs> Listen to me. You still gotta have help. Help. 
There ain't no hell. Well, sure there is, Pete. I'll oh. find it. I bet you Lowe and Raleigh are laughing for faith. Lowe and Raleigh? They friends of yours? Oh, sure. They're friends. They're partners. Where are they, Pete? They sure would like to see me. There's someplace near? Oh, they ain't far. <laughs> they wouldn't be far. Come on, no, Pete. Tell me where to find them. They wouldn't be far. Where would they be? I rode off and left them. I come home from Ma's healing. Where, Pete? Ma. Ma. Tell me where. I rode off and left them. That shack near near the creek, near Reed's Creek. All right. You just lie easy. Come on. Joe. Joe. Yeah, Pete? You ain't, ain't going to bring the law on me. Don't you worry Joe. about that. We'll get help without the danged old law. You just lie easy. I'll be back. Stop right there. Sure. Sure, mister. Get off your horse. <laughs> Walk up here, nice and slow and easy. You, you don't need to worry none about me. <laughs> That's right, Sonny, I don't. You got a gun? No, mister, I ain't. I ain't never believed much in shooting. <laughs> in that night. Y your name Raleigh? Or, uh, Low? You better come on in the house, kid. And remember, you may not wear a gun, but I do. Oh, I ain't got Just no... Just shut up till we get in there. Go on. Why didn't you finish him out there? Well, now, Raleigh... This young fella's kind of interesting. He ain't ought to take no chances. He knows both our names. Now, how do you suppose he found that out? Yeah, who told you? Why, he... Now, how do you suppose he knew right where to find us? You should have shot him. <laughs> Plenty of time for that. First, though, I'd like to know a few answers. Well, there ain't nothing I You better can... make it good, kid. Raleigh gets awful nervous when folks know where he is. I'm trying to tell you. Pete sent me. Pete sent you? Well, now, ain't that interesting? Let's hear the whole story, kid. Well, uh, he didn't exactly send me, but he needs help. And he told me you're his partner, so I come. Mm. So old Pete needs help. And we'll go find him. Where is he, kid? Why, he's at the place, the home place, out of Dodge. Oh, Pete went home. He come home shot? Yeah. Yeah, I know. He figured Ma could heal him, but Ma's dead. I went for the doc, but the marshal wouldn't make no deal, so I hit him. I come to you for help. The marshal wouldn't make no deal? I just sounded him out some. But even if Pete gave back the money, the marshal said he'd have to stand trial. You told the marshal about the money? Oh, I didn't come right out and tell him no, mister. I, I just... Well, I just wanted to find out if, if somebody gave the money back, would they go free? Then what did you do? Well, I rode back to the place and hid Pete and hid the money. And I come after you for help. You hear that, Raleigh? The kid come for our help. Yeah. And he knows where the money is. We better let him take us to old Pete, don't you think? Yeah, I guess we better. Matt, come in. Come in. I just got a minute, Doc. 
Well, sit down there. What's on your mind? I was wondering about that call you got to go out to the Belvin place. Well, you know, I was wondering about that, too. Oh, what do you mean? Well, when I got out there, Matt, there, there wasn't anybody there. No. If anybody had been sick, he sure got up and walked away in a hurry. The Belvin boy asked you to go out there, huh? Yeah, that's right. Just a few minutes before I saw you on Front Street, remember that? Uh-huh. He said somebody needed a doctor. Bad. And you didn't see him at all? Not out there, I didn't. I did see him a little later, though. Oh, how was that? Well, I drove on out a little farther to see old lady Hyde. And on the way back, I saw the boy running up from the stream bank. Did you see where he went? Well, he headed for the barn. And a few minutes later, he passed me on the road, and he was riding like the Pony Express. Well, he didn't even so much as wave to me as he went by. Do you think he's up to something? Yeah, Doc, I'm afraid he is. We can leave the horses here. It's just a short spell down to the creek. Where's the money? We can get that later. After we tend to peak. Yeah, Riley. We'd ought to tend to Pete first off. He's waiting for you. Right down here. He won't be waiting long. He's right down here in these bushes. I'll bring him, Pete. Well, I'll bring your partners. Oh, no, no. That's right, Pete. The kid brung us right here. Oh. Rode right up and got us oh. and brung us here. Riley, I, I didn't mean it. You can have the money. Sure we can. I, I, don't you worry none about that, Pete. Was, Your kid brother's going to tell us just gonna, where it is. I was going to bring it back and, and split it up. Oh, but you I'll won't have to do that now, will you? We're right here. What are you all talking about? This ain't no time for join. Pete needs your help. And I tell you, kid... We're going to fix it so Pete won't never need no more help at all. Get out of the way, kid. You, you're going to no. shoot him? No. And besides, kid. Well, why do you want to shoot him? You know how the law wouldn't make no deal, kid. Well, we won't either. What do you mean? He run off with the money, all right. All of it. He took our cut, too. But listen. And that ain't honest, no. kid. He's got to answer for it. Please, no. Go ahead, Raleigh. No. Him. I came to you for help, and you killed him. Stand easy, kid. You wouldn't want to make the same mistake your brother made, would you? Now, where's the money? I ain't going to show you nothing. Persuade him a little, Raleigh. No! You going to show us? No, I ain't. All right, Raleigh. Get him along. Drop your gun. It's the law. Get him. Right now, Mr. Jones. Yeah, come on. That big one's dead. Yeah. This other one's not going to live long. You all right, Joe? Yeah, I'm all right. Mr. Jones, look here. He's dead, too. They shot my brother. He was hurt bad, and I brung them to help, and they shot him. He was my only kin, and they shot him. I'm sorry, Joe. He would have given the money back. Marshal, he said so. They didn't give him no chance. He'd have been better off with the law, Joe. Well, you'd have locked him up. But he'd have had a chance. Now, come on, Chester. Let's get this one to Doc. I thought you said he was dying, Mr. John. Yeah. But we've got to give him his chance, too.
Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNair is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Oh, <laughs>